Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on evoked potentials. Evoked potentials are used in monitoring the depth of anesthesia and assessing spinal cord function during spinal surgery. It is an aspect of EEG monitoring. Synonyms include evoked response and event-related potential. The signal in the EEG is produced when an individual receives a visual, auditory, or somatosensory stimulus. The EPs are detected by an electrode which is positioned over the primary receiving area for that sensory modality. For example, somatosensory evoked potentials are recorded from electrodes positioned over the sensory cortex. Recorded potentials are only a few microvolts in amplitude. It is swamped by the noise of the global EEG. The range of EPs ranges from 0.1 microvolt to 2 microvolt. The range of EEG background amplitude is 10 to 300 microvolt. Computer averaging is used to extract these low potentials from the EEG. The patient is subjected to a large number of repeated stimuli. EEG is recorded during a fixed period after each one. It is then amplified before the EPs are extracted by taking the average of this large number of responses. It is used to measure anesthetic depth and auditory evoked responses show more promise compared to visual and somatosensory EPs in this respect. EPs are used in spinal surgery to monitor spinal cord function. Historically, intraoperative wake-up test is used. Prior to monitoring with EPs, in order to test the spinal cord function, anesthesia was lightened with appropriate analgesia to the point at which the subject could respond to a request to move both arms and legs. Currently, during spinal surgery, EPs are used to monitor spinal cord function. The following may be used. Visual evoked potentials, VEPs, auditory evoked potentials, somatosensory evoked potentials, and motor evoked potentials. The somatosensory evoked potentials assess the dorsal columns, which is supplied by the posterior spinal artery. Motor evoked potentials assess the corticospinal tract, which is supplied by the anterior spinal artery. When MEPs are measured, there is risk of tongue laceration with the contraction of facial muscles. Use a bite block. Spinal cord function frequently assessed with a combination of SSEPs and MEPs. The mode of anesthesia of choice is total intravenous anesthesia with propofol plus remifentanil allows optimal neuromonitoring. Ideally, nitrous oxide presidex, low-dose volatile anesthetics and muscle relaxants should not be used. Maintain a stable anesthesia as a sudden change may make SSEP or MEP interpretation difficult. EPs are very low amplitude and the signal is averaged. Latency and amplitude are measured by electrodes which monitor the cerebral cortex. Limitations include somatosensory potentials are depressed by high concentration of volatile agents and by high doses of opioids. Anesthetic Effects on SSEP and MEP Monitoring Most IV anesthetics have dose-dependent effects by decreasing the amplitude and increasing the latency of SSEPs and MEPs. Etomidate and ketamine increases the amplitude of SSEPs and MEPs. Propofol causes a dose-dependent decrease in MEP and SSEP amplitude but is more stable compared to volatile anesthetics. Volatile anesthetics decrease the amplitude and increase the latency of SSEPs. Low doses of volatile anesthetics abolish transcranial MEPs. Nitrous oxide causes a dose-dependent decrease in amplitude and increase in latency of SSEPs and dose-dependent decrease of transcranial MEPs. Opioids, when the dose is not excessive, has minimal effects on SSEPs and MEPs. Muscle relaxants have little effect on SSEP but prevent the recording of MEPs. Visual evoked potentials are produced in response to a pulse 
flash of light and elicit mainly a cortical response. They are more variable than auditory EPs and give more qualitative than quantitative information. Auditory evoked responses or AERs, the response time or latency is represented by a series of peaks and throws of a recorded process signals. Repetitive 6 to 10 Hz stimulus activates the pathways from the cochlea to the cortex, and a series of waves is recorded. The separate waves relate to their anatomical origin. The following does not correlate with depth of anesthesia. Number 1. Brainstem response at 0 to 10 millisecond latency and late cortical response at 50 to 500 millisecond latency, which is arising from the frontal cortex and association areas. It is the waveform of the middle latency section, 10 to 50 millisecond latency, which correlates with depth of anesthesia. It originates in the auditory cortex. The mid latency region contains two troughs separated by a peak. The amplitude and latency of the peak, PA, and the second trough, or nadir NB, are analyzed. We move on to somatosensory evoked potentials. These are potentials of very small amplitude which are measured by electrodes over the sensory cortex. The assumption that if sensory pathways were intact, as in spinal surgery for example, then motor pathways will not have been damaged, does not always hold true. Motor evoked potentials. These are large amplitude potentials generated by stimulation of the motor cortex and measured by needle electrodes placed in selected muscle groups. MEP absence suggests damage to the corticospinal tract. It is suppressed by volatile anesthetics at MAC values greater than 0.5. Thus, TIVA may be indicated for spinal surgery. An alternative is to test cord function by means of epidural motor EPs, which are relatively unaffected by anesthetic agents. Neurology Evoked potentials are used to aid the diagnosis of a number of neurological conditions such as multiple sclerosis and other demyelinating diseases, tumour in the posterior fossa, in which auditory EPs are useful, and global head injury. These are my references. Thank you.